This is my team selection for game week 35. This is my wild card and it centers around four teams and this is why. Welcome to the Gianni Petici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. We're gonna be looking at four teams in detail this week. That's because for me, the wild card revolves around these four teams. That will be 12 of our 15 spots. Triple Man City, triple Chelsea, triple Spurs, and triple Newcastle. Now, before we see the team, why would you go so big on those three tip four teams? Well, this is a fixture play. This is absolutely a fixture play because yes, they have all the additional fixtures, but they've also got good fixtures outside of that. This isn't a case of picking average or bad players just because they double. There's good players in these teams. And when we look at those additional fixtures, it gives you, if you go for 12 players from those four teams, it gives you an additional 18 fixtures than picking 12 players from teams that don't have a double at all, which is like two thirds of the teams in the Premier League, right? So your Chelsea and Spurs players, that's six players. Well, they've got double-double. So that's, uh, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 additional performances just from those two teams. And then you have three additional performances at Man City, three additional performances at Newcastle. That's 15, that's 18. So look, 18 sets of 90. Yeah, you can do a lot with that. So let's have a look at the spacing of the fixtures to see if we like the ticker. Now, Lego Mane has produced this brilliant graphic which helps show the day's recovery between fixtures. Now, the brilliant news is those four teams, for me, there's no major, major alarm bells. Man City are always won this time of year. That's because they're usually in the Champions League latter stages. Well, they're not now. They're not in the semi-finals of the Champions League. So the congestion for Man City, if you're looking at a Foden or a Haaland or a De Bruyne especially, because we worry about him with rotation, well, maybe that fear isn't quite the case. So Man City, we can see in game week 35, is a good entry point. It's Forest away. Okay. Uh, game week 36, lots of spacing there. It's Wolves at home. The double is Fulham and Tottenham. Loads will be captaining Haaland. And then final day of the season to probably win the title will be West Ham, right? Um, if we look at Spurs, well, they've had a big, big break. They then play in 35 in a double against Arsenal and Chelsea. It is a short turnaround to Liverpool, but players like Van der Ven or Vicario or Son feel safe. And again, in 36, you'll probably be benching a lot of them. We'll have a look at what I'll be doing in 36 in just a sec. The double of Burnley and City, Sheffield United on the final day. Spurs, tick. What about Chelsea? Entry point for Chelsea, game week 35. Aston Villa and Spurs in a double. That's fine. It's a double. Good spacing. West Ham in 36 is a short turnaround. So again, you might be a little bit wary there with some of your players, like Augusto that's had injury problems. 37, the double spacing is fine. It's Forest and Brighton. And Bournemouth at home on the final day is also a good one. And then finally, we've got to have a quick look at Newcastle, haven't we? Again, Newcastle aren't involved in Europe. This helps. It is a quick turnaround from their midweek fixture to Sheffield United at the weekend. But again, it's a home fixture and the likes of Gordon have been so, so reliable. Then it's a big rest to Burnley in 36. The double is nice. It's Brighton and United. And then it's Brentford. So look, there we have our spaces. This graphic is brilliant from Lego Marnie. Study it. Have a look at it. Always really important to look at rotation this time of year. So shall we have a look at the actual wildcard team that I've put together? Now, I have spent a long time deliberating and by no means am I 100% set. But as I talk through my choices here, let me tell you which ones I feel like are absolutely safe and which ones are maybe up for grabs, which spots are up for grabs. Okay, so let's start with my wildcard team, which has around half a million in the bank to play with at the moment. Okay, so as promised, it's going to have triple City, Spurs, Chelsea, and Newcastle. So let's start with uh, Spurs, shall we? Um, I've got Vicario in goal. Again, Spurs have been useless for clean sheets this season, but Vicario, better than the defenders because he'll pick up save points. And with that, you might even get some bonus. So Vicario, for me, is the easy goalkeeper pick. I'm not 100% sure on goalkeeper number two, but goalkeeper one, definitely Vicario, who will be starting for me in 35, starting for me in 37, probably in 38 as well. At the moment, I've gone Mickey van der Ven, and that's because he's so much cheaper than, say, a Pedro Porro. Now, Destiny Adoji is out injured for the rest of the season. 
That's a shame because he, he's a defender like Poro that offers upside, but unlike Poro, he's not so expensive. Poro's nearing six million now, guys. Van der Ven's around four and a half. So it's a big saving to go to a Van der Ven, who, sure, Van der Ven's numbers this year in attack aren't as good. I think he's got a couple of goals, no assists, versus Poro, who's got, I think it's around eight assists and a goal. Um, so, sure, you don't quite get the upside, but you save a ton of money. And Poro, we know, has had an ongoing injury. Now, there is a one short, fast turnaround for Spurs. And with that in mind, Van der Ven, yeah. Um, and then I've got Son. Of course I've got Son. So, it's Van der Ven, Son and Vicario at the moment. I think there's a good chance of going with all three of them. Vicar Van der Ven could come out. And that is because I do also like Brennan Johnson as a bit of a punt in midfield. The problem, as we'll see in a minute, midfield spaces are so, so tight. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering where I am, I'm in a hotel room in Seattle. Just arrived from uh, Miami. Got my got my shirt on. Uh, where I did see Messi and Suarez. Pretty cool, um, guys. If you fancy hitting the like button and subscribing, that'd be amazing. I'd love to get to a good, healthy number of subscribers by the end of the season. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. So yeah, Brennan Richarlison, if fit, could play a part, but we'll see. The midfield spots are so so difficult. Um, Shall we talk Newcastle next? Because Newcastle absolutely need the triple up. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a shoe-in that I'm going to have Isak and Gordon. The combination is so, so good. We've seen in recent weeks, when they beat Spurs 4-0, they actually played with a 3-5-2. They played Gordon and Isak centrally up front. How nice is that for Gordon owners? Like They played Harvey Barnes and I think Jacob Murphy at wing-back. It really worked for them. We don't know if that will be a formation Eddie Howe continues to use, but regardless, Gordon's record's insane at home. It's Sheffield United up next. It's good, good fixtures. The Dublin 37's all right as well. Isak is flying at the minute. Those two are locks in my wildcard team. Absolutely. Then I've got Dan Byrne in the defence. Now look, Cher is an upgrade. Uh, again, you've got to find a million. And then if you want to go Trippier, you've got to find another million. So at the moment, I've got Byrne, who's saving a couple of million on a Trippier. Sure, I could upgrade if I feel like I needed to downgrade one of my midfield spots, which we'll talk about in a minute. I reckon you'll all be guessing what midfielder I might be going big on, which is why I'm saving money at the back. You probably know. Um, hint, no Champions League. Makes me want him even more. Um, we'll get to him in a minute. Let's have a look at Chelsea, shall we? Um, so look, Chelsea, a bit like Spurs, we don't feel like we can bank on them for clean sheets. We just don't. We just don't. And they're so frustrating. Um, I actually think they're a better defence than Spurs. Um, and with that in mind, I will have a Chelsea defender. Now, Petrovic is an option in goal. I'm, at the moment in this draft, I've got Gusto. He is incredible value. I know he's flagged. Injuries are a problem for him. And if we don't think he's going to be fit for the double in 35 for both games, then of course we, we, I wouldn't have him in. But at the moment, I think he's a good option. Dizazi is another one I quite like who's under around 5 million, who could even come in at right back. Uh, but Dizazi has been in and out of the team. Gusto is the one defender that offers the upside. I mean, Cucurella has been nailed at left back of late. But I'm not a massive fan. Gusto definitely has the upside on the other Chelsea defenders. He's also the cheapest that actually start games when they're fit. So Gusto is in. Palmer we don't need to talk about. Guys, I hate I hate telling managers on this channel how to manage their team. I hate saying you have to have this player. And it's very... I probably said a couple of times this season. Like, at one point in the season, I, said, I probably said you have to have Haaland. At one point in the season, I probably said you're going to need Salah. You have to have Palmer in your team if he's fit. Like, Cole Palmer has smashed it this year. And he's got the double double. Um, and then it's Nicholas Jackson. Now, I am recording this just before Chelsea play. If Jackson picks up a yellow card, he's suspended um, for a couple of games. It's his last match uh, to pick up that yellow. So look, if Jackson was suspended, that would very easily be, say, a Hoyland. Remember, Man United do double in 37. And actually, we probably should give Man United a bit of airtime. I'll come to them in a second. But let's continue with the team. So we've got Palmer, Jackson and Gusto. And then we've got Man City to discuss. Now, what three Man City would I go for? Well, most will go for Haaland. Don't need to talk about him. Most will go for Foden. I don't think we need to talk about Foden. And then they'll have a defender or an Edison. So Guardiol or Edison, uh, perhaps even a Diaz. Um, I don't think I want a Man City defender. I mean, sure, I do. If I could have four players, I'd have four players. But what I want, as always, is to try and think of big ceiling, big upside, last few weeks, let's just go for it. And 
Nothing says that to me more than De Bruyne, who's a differential. He's not got Champions League. He looked good in the FA Cup semi-final. The spacing of his fixtures is all right. He has a double in 37. He could do damage against Nottingham Forest. He could do damage against Wolves at home. And the final day of the season, it's West Ham at home. I'm going to struggle not to put De Bruyne in this team. So by going De Bruyne and Foden and Haaland, it gives me a differential route. But it does mean no Bruno. Many like Bruno. No one likes Man United at the minute, but they like Bruno. Okay. Um, so if they like Bruno, why do they like Bruno? Well, he's been a talisman of late. He's carrying United. The entry point is Burnley at home. Nice. He then plays Palace away. You could even bench him for that fixture if you wanted to. And then in 37, he does have a home double. He plays Arsenal, difficult. Newcastle, difficult. But it is a home double. Well, Man United, they might not be winning games necessarily, but they are scoring goals. And then on the final day of the season, it's Brighton away. I'm not sure. Like Bruno's a very good pick. He's the, the Man United player to go for. But De Bruyne is just a different level. Obviously, we all rate De Bruyne more as a footballer, but even in FPL, and that's not always been the case, Bruno's been the better FPL pick than De Bruyne a lot since he's joined the league. At the moment, with these fixtures, the way their teams are playing, the fact City are going for the title, Man United are toxic at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if Man United lost to a Burnley. That, or a Pal I think Palace on 36, Palace are favourites. The double is difficult. So, unpredictable Man United, and therefore... Think I'm okay swerving Bruno. I doesn't. I'd like him in, but I can't see where I squeeze him in. It's him or De Bruyne. I'm not sacrificing a Gordon, a Palmer, or a Son. Foden, no, I don't think I can sacrifice Foden either. So look, that's my core twelve players. I do have a couple of Man United players. They're bench options, really. Um, we'll see where they come into the eleven in what weeks. Obviously, thirty-seven. I'm bench boosting, so they'll play then. So I've got Anana and I've got Dallo. I'm not actually expecting clean sheets, but Anana, like Vicario, mops up save points. And Dallo is the best in terms of attacking threat at Man United in the back line. Um, the only other player I've got here that doesn't double in 37, he'll start for me in 36. I might even sell him in 37 to go to a doubler, but is the best defence in the league and having a little bit of cover there. And that is Gabriel. He offers goal threat too. He'll be benched in 35, but in 36 against Bournemouth at home, he'll play. He'll play for me on the final day of the season. Gabriel is the only single game weaker in 37 in this team. So, there we have it. Shall we see how I'm set with this team without any transfers between now and the rest of the season? How do I look in 36, 37, 38? Well, let's have a look, shall we? I've used FPL team here. And shout out FPL team. If you want to use it, this is a free tool. Um, and guys, thank you for hitting those buttons. Likes and subscribes are so, so welcome. Um, and when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell because on Friday, I'm going to do like a, a land back in England and I'm going to do a um, like a Friday locked wildcard team. And I have to lock in on Friday or certainly Saturday morning early because I'm on Sky Sports News Saturday morning and I come off air three minutes before the deadline. Like I'm not going to be making my wildcard team then in that three minute window. So I'm locking in on Friday, guys. Um, so look, let's so tune into that live uh, on Friday. I said I'd tell you the safe players. So let's just look at my 35 team at the moment. Vicario's 100% in. Van der Ven, Bern, Gusto, their teams will be covered, but it could be Porro, Cher, De Sassi, whatever. Gordon's in. 100%, Palmer 100%, if it's Son 100%, I feel like I'm almost certainly going to go De Bruyne. And then again, Haaland, Isak Jackson feels pretty safe, Foden too. So a lot of these feel fairly locked. So look, in 35, I'm benching Foden, not great, but someone ha something has to give. Again, Dallo and Gabriel and Anana benched. In 36, without transfers, it looks good. Again, Dallo is benched. Um, Van der Ven could be on the bench. Again, my Spurs players, Vicario, benched. I think I'd start Son over a Jackson. Um, Son away to Liverpool is tricky, but Son, big game player. In 37, this is bench boost. So again, they all double other than Gabriel. I could use a free transfer by then. Injuries will happen, of course. Um... And then 38, I'd love to go into 38 with two free transfers. Game week 38 offers so, so much in terms of who has something to play for. And some of those on the beach teams will go big on rotation. We've seen 38 before 
it's going to be 38 be like oh it's loads of kids from the academy just getting their one shot or some really random choices from the manager some surprise benching so again having a good bench in 38 is important but having players you think could go big um with something to play for or just that fixture mismatch. So going into 38 with two frees would be the dream scenario uh, for me. Um, so there we have it. That's my lineup going to the end of the season. That's without any transfers, of course. Uh, if you've enjoyed this stream, thank you for watching. If you're new around here, thank you for joining the journey. There are videos through till now to the end of the season and pre-season is going to be a big one. Uh, lots of videos planned for that period as well. Guys, I will see you on Friday afternoon for my live wildcard special. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you.